Thanks for tuning in to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. Here you'll find tips, insight, and information to help your music and your ministry succeed. Whether you're a singer, a musician, or a songwriter, we want to help you where you are, but we also want to help you get to where you want to go. We believe that our talents are God's gift to us, but what we do with those are our gift back to God. Yesterday's information is important, but what we can learn today will make this the best day yet. Hey, everybody, Rob Novell, we're back for another episode of the CNS podcast, The Best Day Yet. And uh, man, I'm excited. Um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about the full disclosure part of this in a minute. I'm just excited about our guest that's with us today because I uh, love this guy and um, would, you know, if he had time, I'd have him on these every week just because I like talking to the guy um, and looking at him. I'm looking at him on the screen. You guys don't see this, but we Zoom these. And uh, I love this guy, <laughs> love this guy so much. And that is none other than uh, Dr. John Groves. John, thank you for being here. I appreciate you big time. I appreciate you. I love you. Man, I love you. Um, so uh, the the topic, and I had put a post out, and let me just do this. Let me, I'm just going to kind of verbatim here, read uh, I put a post up on Facebook. I don't know when. Well, if it'll open. Okay. Um, six days ago is what it says. So I guess it was six day, six days ago I put this post up. And it's just somewhere I was I was in my personal study that night and uh God gave me this thought. a, a Paul, a Barnabas, and a Timothy. Uh Paul represents that person in your life who mentors, leads, and directs you. They've traveled further down the road, and in return, they can help you travel further down the road. A Barnabas represents someone in your life who encourages you and holds you accountable in your faith and in your life. They tell you what you need to hear, even when you don't want to hear it. Timothy represents that individual uh, you help guide along the road of faith and life, someone who you can mentor, lead, and direct from your own experience. So, These three relationships are a secret for success if you're open and can listen and receive. If your attitude is right, the results will be right. And I just closed it out by saying it's perfect segue to bring you into this thing. I am blessed and beyond thankful to have all three of these relationships healthy, active, and productive in my life. And the full disclosure part is literally 40 minutes ago, I'm driving home. And I knew I was coming home to do this. And um, man, God said, call John. And I'm like, ah, it's late. He's like, call John. And uh, so I called John. And literally, uh, when you when you want to talk about uh, healthy and successful relations in your, relationships in your life, people that God will send to you to come along beside you, even when you give them 40 minutes notice. Uh, Dr. John Groves is that person in my life. And I am blessed beyond measure to have you in my life. And again, blessed to have you with us today. So, you know, our students know you, John, but uh, for those that would be listening to this podcast that aren't yet part of our CNS family, and we're praying them in, we're praying them in. So that that's the yet. Uh, Introduce yourself real quick and let them know. Again, I am looking at all these amazing accolades and beautiful toys on the shelf behind you. <laughs> they can't see that. So let them know who you are real quick. Okay. So um, I pastor Victory Baptist Church in Inverness, Florida, which is uh, about an hour from Tampa and about an hour from Orlando. So I'm somewhere in the middle there. Um, and uh, spent 30 years on the road in evangelism, traveling the country, preaching revival meetings, missions conferences, you know, uh, special days, things like that, investing in preachers and their families and their churches. And, um, um, you're, you're going to mention more about this in a minute, but I, I totally understand what it means not only to be somebody for somebody that, that, um, that friend, that that uh, confidant, whatever it is, but to also need that 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, I can I can relate on both sides of that. Uh, but uh, we're here and we're we're building a church and investing in people's lives and reaching our community for Jesus. And that's what we're doing. But my part, as far as the school goes, uh, if I if you don't care if I just kind of tell about that, absolutely. Originally, was uh, just to bring one of my sons to the school, and then um, I saw a need in some of the young people that was there. And uh, uh, I didn't know how to meet that need. I just wanted to be a part of that. So I kind of jumped in in a place that didn't seem like anybody else noticed at first. I didn't know I, it was being watched. But Oh, it was being uh, watched. Yes, sir. Yeah. It was. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know what? That turned into something phenomenal, really. And Absolutely. Uh, it has built some really good, solid relationships with uh, some of our students. And yep. um and part of those are your family. Right. Uh, so that's right. You know, that's that's a big, big thing for us, you know. And then and then um holding the um what what God laid on your heart and then mine as well was to open up for the pastor's retreat. And God has kind of morphed that into some different things at, right. at times. And so right. uh when preachers are in need of just to hang out and talk and let's let's talk about our church and let's talk about what, how do we handle things and how do you pray through those troubled times and, and where do you find that encouragement? So we, we meet all those parts as best we can. And then I also get an opportunity to invest in our school as far as um, teaching a couple of classes and things. So um, kind of an all around, you know, Jack of all trades and master of none. So <laughs> <laughs> no, Absolutely not. But what what I love is um, when when God gives us an idea and lays something on our heart to pray about and pursue, and and that's what I do as leading the school. Um, when He gives me an idea, I pray pray about it and watch it um, nurture that, and then watch it come into focus. And the crazy thing is. We limit our prayers because we ask for something and we don't see what he's actually willing to give us for the little thing we ask. He gives us the big and it was, it's biblical. If you're faithful with the little, he's sure. he's going to send the increase. So what, what started as a, a, who a chance meeting, I'm, I'm in a lobby of a church in Orlando, Florida with the Ball brothers, the Ferguson family, and uh, came down to to play with Bill. And um, he let me set up a booth for the school. And we found ourselves sitting there talking together and, and just connection after connection began to happen. You said Inverness, and I told you, well, for years, my, my grandparents snowbirded in Lake Panasofsky, yeah. right down, right south of you there. And is it, it is south, right? Yes. Um, and so and then i didn't even know till three months later that and we had even talked on the phone and it didn't click that the whole reason i was there to play bass guitar was besides your son for the whole night didn't even know that until because you and i didn't talk that in the lobby so uh, it was just just neat to see all those those dots connect and um how jeff you know it's just another jeff connection because I, I think you were on board when I started mentioning that George could study with Jeff Stice. I could tell the conversation shifted in the favor of CNS. So just another another connection when I look back on what um, God did for us with Jeff Stice and, and this relationship wouldn't have happened for that. So extremely thankful for that. And Man, I and, and listen, may, maybe part of why I've got you here tonight is to keep me in check because I could misinterpret with the best of them, Pastor John. <laughs> and uh, so I want you to keep me on on track because I believe in this model so much that I want to make it a podcast. I believe in this model so much. Next week, we're doing a regional CNS session in Cincinnati. I'm going to speak on this a little bit there and the opening night and the, the devotion. Um, I think it speaks to the mission statement of CNS wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Wholeheartedly. 
So you keep me in line if I sidetrack a little bit here, but I'm going to start. Um, am I correct? And it's possible to look at someone as a Paul and a Barnabas in your life. Sure. Um, I definitely see you as, as someone there. Um, you, you are further down the road, let's say in, uh, from the pulpit standpoint. And <clears throat> when you say you didn't know if anybody was watching, I'm extremely observant, extremely observant. Don't miss much. Don't miss much. Peripheral, great peripheral vision. I'm that guy. So I, I like I said a while ago, I had been praying and you, you touched on the pastor's retreat. I had been praying about that, had that vision. God and I were talking about it Wednesday at lunch. You can't get any more in the middle of our week than Wednesday at lunch. Yeah. I look over and saw you sitting at a table and you, you alluded to this too. One of those was my son. And, um, you know, when he found out I was coming down to Florida and to whose church I was going to be ministering in, he's like, man, I'm going on, I'm going with you, dad. It wasn't me. It was you. Um, I, he wants to come back if, if you'll ever have me, but I don't even know if it's you. It's that Mexican restaurant you took us to. He loved yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I did, I saw where, um, you were taking time out of your schedule to speak into, into them that night back in the room, because that year our dorms were suites. So my oh, kids yeah. were on one side of me and Jen. And that night before we went to bed, he come over. He's like, dad, that pastor John is just an amazing man. The way he delivers the Bible, the way he portrays the, the picture. So you're definitely down the road. Uh, further and from, from that pulpit standpoint. Um, but also, you know, I look at every single person on my staff as a Barnabas relationship in my life. And, um, you know, February, was that February of 22, the wedding? Um, I think so, but I was in Florida and, uh, we, you, you, um, officiated the wedding i did the music for the wedding oh yes i don't think we knew until like a, a week before yeah it, it was just crazy actually i called you i said hey i'm coming through and are you going to be around on such and such date and you're like ah man i'm out of town i've got a i'm doing a wedding and doing I'm a like, wedding i'm like who's wedding and you said well it's, it's a family the fergusons i'm like you're kidding me so yeah <laughs> We, but it was at the reception that night. You spoke into me off to the side. And, um, you know, I, I said it in my post, you know, I, these 7 Eleven, their, 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 their slogan is they're always open. Um, man, I've met a lot of, um, Shell gas station up the road for me. They, they, they're shutting the lights off at 10 o'clock. And not open it again until I don't know. I'm not up early enough. Let's just say 10, 8, 10 a.m. because I'm there by then. But you know, 7 Eleven is always open. Um, I think in order to get the most benefit out of these relationships, you, you have to have that attitude. Yeah, you, you have to. Sure. So um let's start with the Paul. Break that down in in Dr. John vernacular. We're on a time uh, limit, by the way. <laughs> okay, so short story um, would be, or short explanation would be this. So God reaches into the life of Paul, and there's a calling on him. He has been, obviously, we, if you know the scripture, he has been a murderer of the Christians. He is anti-Christ. Right. Uh, does that make sense? So there's a right, pause right, there. He's right. anti, he's against Christ. Right. Okay. So, uh, but in the calling, God says, Paul, I'm going to use you in a mighty way, and you're going to reach a people that the Jews are not reaching. You're going to reach the Gentiles. You're going to reach the, the, the unknown, the unwanted, uh, the heathen. You're going to reach the, the ones that, the others think that they're better than Sam and, Marianne's. Yes. Especially like that. <laughs> yeah. And, um, 
gosh, I wish Marianne was on here so we could razz her. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, dur- so during that time, um, you know, Paul has this complete flip flop of, of, of purpose in his life. And, um, and God put a special calling on him to reach a people. Had it not been for Paul, you and I would not be here. You Absolutely. and I would not be saved. Right. Absolutely. So, um, you know, we never know who I was just preaching this to our church. The decisions you make today ought to be in light of eternity. So do everything in light of eternity because you don't know who you're reaching. You may be dead and gone like Paul, but we're still trusting right. Christ today by his own testimony. Right. Uh, so Paul is a major, major part of Christianity as far as testimony goes. He's the greatest example of if let's. Je- if Jesus is the influencer, he's the influence. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, great. Short, sweet, right to the point. Perfect. Um, so, you know, as you were sharing that, man, that, who that, it's mind, mind blowing. Um, on on the on the days that Rob feels the least worthy, ooh, I'm no Paul. But that's I, what Paul said too. Well, okay, right, right. Paul said, "I am the chiefest among sinners. I am, I, in other words, I'm the lowest of lows." <laughs> but but he was. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, ain't any, Here, I ain't killed any Christians lately. I wanted to, but I haven't. Here's the greatest thing. If if I could if I could tell our audience this about the Apostle Paul, so Paul so Paul teaches this, and it's just it's just massive. In Paul's testimony, as as who God called him to be, he teaches us this: because of Christ, you who in your in your temporal in your flesh in your in all of this, your flesh is unworthy, but He made you God's through salvation, you are made righteous, right with God through the Holy Spirit. I asked this of our church and, and, and another preacher. And I talk about this all the time. I asked this of our church. If I, ra- if I asked you for a raise of hands, how many of you are righteous? There's going to be people that are going to say, well, sometimes, or, uh, well, not always, you know, or it depends right. on the, what I'm doing, who I'm with and all this. Right. They don't realize this, that because of the Holy Spirit that dwells in you, you are made righteous. Now, your flesh may not follow suit, right? but who dwells in you is the one you're supposed to be following, right. not, the, not the flesh. And Paul taught that. Paul was like, look, Jews, salvation's not all about you. This is about mankind, not because you're a Jew. Not because you're a Gentile, not because you've had the gospel and you didn't get the gospel. It's for all. Mm. Paul, Paul's a major leader of salvation. Wow, absolutely. You know what? Again, uh, just a, another nugget for me. Um, just your 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 delivery. Uh, if we ever play like we used to do this back in the day, we 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 used to play staff against students, volleyball and basketball. If uh, we ever do the volleyball again, you, I'm just going to make you the uh, full-time server because you just deliver punctually and perfectly. That's so, my yeah. game. That's your game. That's okay. my game. Volleyball, that's my game. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So They wouldn't let me on the girls' team. That's the, That was really my speed, <laughs> but I can play volleyball. You can play volleyball. <laughs> so, uh, man, when I look back um, on, on the – and again, this is where you keep me in check because – I have a tendency to um, see applications to our our discipleship walk and to our Christian life. Uh, man, I've I have found ways to blanket that over my ministry and my music. Um, I've definitely had those Paul figures musically in my life. Uh, my dad, uh, yeah, be, being the chief among them. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> see what i did there um i did obviously my dad but man jeff stice second secondarily when i look back at my up upbringing and growing up in this school who there's a huge list of pauls and um people that have spoken to me and that i could sit and and listen to 
a couple weeks ago was Cortec convention. On that Tuesday was the Hall of Fame induction ceremony for the SGMA. Uh, sitting there as an SGMA member, proud to be that this year. First time I've sat through that the award ceremony as a member, but more importantly, was one of the inductees that was going yes. in. Yes. And um, it's someone that, 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 who God opened the door for me to live out my life's dream with. And uh, we're talking about Danny Funderburk and the time I was with him in perfect heart. And man, I remember one night uh, early on, he was driving. He's like, hey, Yankee, come up here and sit down. Let's talk. <laughs> and uh, he told me a few things. And one of the things that he told me, John, and I have applied this in so many areas of my life. Um, he he was getting a chance where he had been a Timothy to George and George Johnson, Glenn Payne. He's now able to be a Paul to uh, this Yankee Timothy named Rob Novell. And he he shared this with me that he said that Glenn Payne had told him, he said, Robbie, don't forget who you see on your way up the ladder because you're going to see them on the way down the ladder. And uh, man, those four years I was on the road and then the 30 some years since then, uh, that that thought echoes through my head almost on a daily basis, you know. So uh, little things that um, I believe um, musically, personally, God has sent those type of figures in, into my life. And um, you know what? I think God has a way, too, of the influence continuing even after those people are gone. You mentioned that about Paul. We're, what, 2,000 years removed from Paul. Yeah. Uh, but that influence continues, as you said, we're not here. We're not having this discussion if it wasn't for for Paul. So I know those those people that have been that in my life that have come and gone, uh, that influence still lives lives on. My dad's kind of it's kind of like the Luke and and Obi Wan thing, you know. <laughs> Rob, use use the Force, Rob. It's like you know. There's days that I hear him through the music or something speak into me, and um, um. There's a term for that. My my son's more of a Star Wars nerd than I am. Um, but man, it's it's just I wouldn't trade those relationships in my life for anything. And uh they, you know, continued to to speak into me. Um the bar. Wait, so if if your dad was Obi-Wan, right? So then was Jeff more like Yoda where he <laughs> said, Mess that up, you did. <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. So, Idiot you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can be, hear Jeff saying that. Yeah, too. Idiot you are. <laughs> um man, um golly and Jeff. Uh, yeah, yeah, so many, so many ways, John, that he spoke into me. Um, even some recent things I've gone through. I, I I reflect back to conversations that Jeff and I had um, you know, a couple years prior to his passing that uh ooh, he was almost prophetic with some things. I, over the weekend, uh, ran across a, a, a list that I had made. Dad and I were talking about uh, six years ago, 13 things he put on, we put on that list, 13 things he wanted to see CNS doing in the future. Eight of those I had to check. Two of those, two of those are in the works. There'll be check marks very soon. So, you know, his, the, that list keeps his influence moving and um so paul's huge barnabas now let's talk about that because you, again you've been a paul to me speaking into me um but you're definitely a barnabas because you know i can't you can't call a, a non-barnabas in you know 40 minutes notice and they show up on a zoom call so um <laughs> you, you're here because you i didn't have to sell this hard i just simply said hey i'm i'm doing this tonight and i god's god lays you on my heart and i, I Will you do this? And you're like, yep, send me the link. And uh, here we are. So um, I, and, and maybe, maybe, maybe it's just where I find us, but let me say it this way. The, the staff, um, and you and I have talked this definitely offline, the staff that God has assembled at CNS, they are people, um, God showed, God showed me three things during CNS 23 about why my dad always surrounded himself with the people that he did surround himself with. Number one, their spiritual walk would not hinder 
our ministry of the Charles of School of Music, but it would enhance our ministry. They fit in spiritually, number one. Number two, we're a school of music. Uh, they needed to be qualified to teach music. That's what we do. But number three was, was the big one. And this is where I look down, you know, our current staff and man, I can check the all three boxes. The third one had to be people that my dad could trust to be in a room and teach a class, teach a private lesson, um, and not do something that would jeopardize um, what God needed CNS to be in people's lives. So I look down the list of this current staff and I check that box for every single staff member. And that's why uh, I have them on the staff. Some uh, some names that I'm going to be announcing soon and, and then several special guests that are already scheduled to come into CNS 24, check all three of those boxes as well. Um, so it's vitally important to me when I'm in ministry to make sure that the, the you know, dad would say, keep your ducks in a row, Robbie, you know, making sure it's kind of kind of almost kind of a new um, measuring stick for me as we move forward. I need to know that those three boxes can be checked and um, that's the person that God needs with us. So I look down the list of our staff and I see all kinds of Barnabases even some uh, Barnaba Barnabanesettes in the the lady folk. Um, yeah. Is that a word? Barnabanesett. It is now. Um, so, am I on the right track with that? Am I am I barking up the right tree here? So Barnabas was the one that God used to bring Paul under His wing when others were unsure of him because of his past or because of what they'd heard. They may not have even known him, but Barnabas said, listen, I see God in, in him. I see what God's doing in him and he's one of us and this is going to work. And even in their, it, it, maybe some of their dismay, even it, it, or their doubt, they, maybe they looked at him and said, um, eh, let's, you know, you, you know, you're, we'll, we'll try him out. We'll see. Barnabas is the one who said, you know what, guys, it's not about us. It's not about whether we we get it or we don't get it. God's called him and we need to use him. Yeah. And um, and Barnabas took took Paul under his wing and he said, he, you know, it's, it's as, as though he said this, son, <clears throat> there's going to be some that are going to go with you. and There's going to be some that are not. But if you keep your eyes on the Lord, you'll do fine. And I think that I, most likely because Barnabas would have been the, the elder, Paul, Paul had the, mo the most perfect discipleship right there where, where he had somebody that said, you know what, Look, not, not, just, not just to send you off, not say, hey, go serve God. But he said, come with me, work mm -hmm. with me, and let's walk together in this. And Rob, can I just say what I think I see in our staff? is that right. is that the, our staff members look at not just the students but but each other and they say hey are did you need something did, can i help you with that or do you need some encouragement what and so everybody gets to play the part of a barnabas at right. some point right. and says you know what i know god's hand is on you so i'm going to i'm going to you know i'm going to introduce myself into your life as a disciple, you know, I'm going to disciple you in what area I can, and you'll do the same for me. Right. And I think that's why we have such unity in our staff. Absolutely. No, nobody, it's not a one man show. Nobody's trying to outdo the next guy, uh, any of that kind of stuff. It literally is a unified family where God has said, here's your Barnabas, here's your Paul's, here's your Timothy's, here's every, it take, cause it takes all those parts. Right. And every single one of them, is found valuable by all the others. Nobody looks down at the next guy and goes, well, he can't teach what I teach. But instead, everybody goes, well, I might not be able to do that, but look what God sent us. We have somebody that can. Right. And man, what God has put together is just phenomenal. It is phenomenal. That's if the thing. we did not have students, we would still have a great school. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because we do exactly what you said. We're encouraging each other and we're speaking into each other's lives during that week. Yes. But yes. the the coolest part about it is it's not just that week. It's 
it's the the other what's 365 minus seven it's those other days of the year yeah so three six three fifty eight um it's those days of the year that 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 relationship stays stays active yes and, and we we talked about this the other day and it's so neat we'll just use Devin as an example to watch okay so we talked about this the other day our staff members come in and find a way to potentially flourish their ministry and grow their ministry outside of CNS through their involvement with CNS. And little Devin walked into there and what God is doing in such a short period of time in that young man's life. It's just amazing. It's amazing. And um, he credits each and every staff member because everyone said, you know what? Um, you're welcome. And oh, um, this isn't this isn't me, but but honestly, I here's that trust level again. That tr trust has to go two ways. It has to it can't be a one way street. It has to be two ways. I think when I called everybody and said, "Hey, I'm bringing this young kid in from Michigan," because God said to bring this young man in from Michigan. Yeah, I think I think everyone said, "Okay, we trust you." Okay, let's and then we get there, and you know. Uh, it within that first evening, John, it was like he'd been with us for years, you know, it was yeah. just, just crazy. So, and talk about a humble guy. Oh, unbelievably humble. The, unbelievably the, the guy humble. is all about just let's whatever the Lord wants. I'll just he, do whatever he wants. He texts me. He texts me one day last week. Uh, we went to, to Mississippi together for Tate Emmons CD release party. Uh, I picked uh, Devin up at the airport on my way through Atlanta. And um, he started, he put his bag in, he, he, he opened the passenger door. I'm like, no, 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 no. You got to ride up on top. You don't get, don't get in here. <laughs> he just looked at me. It's, he froze. Uh, but um, we, we were talking and, and um, we had a great, great trip, quick trip, but great trip. He texted me a couple of nights later and just thanked me and CNS for the level of influence that we've, we've been on his life and shared with me how, how God has used us to minister to him. And um, I hit him back and I said, you know what? I said, Devin, it, you, your talents, your giftings make you valuable, but yeah. your attitude makes you usable and shareable. It's really easy for me re right now to talk Devin up, talk to him with a group, um, a well-known group at NQC, and he's going out on the road with them for for a week's tour ne next week and doing some big influential dates on that, that trip. So, um, you know, if, 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 if you're open, you can receive, um, it's football season, you know, a quarterback can't throw a guy, a ball to a guy who's, you know, surrounded by three defenders guys got to be open and reset to, to, to be receptive to receive that. So I think, you know, listeners listening in, trying to figure out how in the world do I connect these dots to my weekend ministry? Well, it's very simple. Um, you have people speaking into you, you, uh, you know, be open to let people speak in, into you, you know, attitude, attitudes, everything. My, my dad said, would say, Robbie, your, your altitude's affected by your attitude. You know, that's right. Um, God can only take you as, as far as you're going to let him take you. And, if you keep yourself out of the way and let God be God. Um, so I think with, with our, our ministries that are listening, um, man, I want to just encourage them to, to have these Paul, have these Barnabas relationships in our lives. I heard this years ago, you can't be over the things that God wants to put under you in your life. If you can't be under what he's already put over you in your life. So true. then moving on to the Timothy's um, John, we can't, we can't, pour into a Devon. We can't speak in his life if he comes in and sees dysfunction. And and you used the word a while ago, this staff is very unified. And I'm beyond proud of that. Proud of the talent of our staff, but the fact that um man, we've linked arms and it's 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 what can we do, not what can I do. It's what can we do. Um so you know so let's let's move on to the Timothy. Give us your your biblical thing there, and we'll be wrapping up here in just a few minutes. So you you mentioned in humor a little while ago, you know, some Star Wars things, and right. uh, you know, Vader says, "Luke, I'm your father." 
Well, Paul said the same thing to Timothy. He called him son, and he called him his son in the ministry. Mm. And that means, in order to do that, he had to have he had to have a heart to look into his life and say, "I want a relationship with you," to begin with. Wow. And then, and then he had to have he had to take the time to invest in him for Timothy to feel as though he was the son in the ministry of Paul. And then when Paul announces this, when Paul talks about this, he writes to him. He has, he has others calling. So this is not a private thing. He, Paul had to have literally considered him so close to his heart that he was willing to announce to others, Timothy's my son. Timothy's my son in the ministry. Timothy's the one that I'm investing in. There's no secret. It, and, and Timothy, boy, what a, what a phenomenal place to be, to be able to say, do you know who is investing in me? <laughs> Paul. Right. Because listen, people knew who Paul was, right. good and bad. Right. But when he, when, when, when everybody started realizing that what Paul stood for, Timothy could say, okay, so here, let, let's make it relatable. There's very few people in this world that could say, you know who invested in me? Jeff Stice invested in me. Right. 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 So like my son, George, George can say, you know who taught me how to do this? Jeff Stice taught me how to do this. Not everybody can say that. Right. That's the place that Timothy was at to be able to say, do you know who's investing in me? Wow. But what an exciting thing. Absolutely. Man. Absolutely. Awesome. I mean, it's, and, you know, we like the fact to be able to say, I can be a Paul or I can be a Barnabas. Right. But can you imagine if you really understood or could grasp the mentality of Timothy to be able to say, you know why I know what I know? Mm. Because I went to the school of the right. prophets. Right. I sat underneath Paul. Wow. I sat underneath Barnabas, who taught Paul, and now I'm going to CNS. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know, I uh, so okay. So you you're the one that done threw it all out of context. I had you here to check me, and I gotta start checking you. That's it. <laughs> to put a bow on this, um, again, I, and I said it when I read my my post that I put up. I, I'm thankful that all three of these areas are active and healthy and functioning in my life on August 16th of 2023. Uh, you're a big part of that. Um, Anything you need to say in parting before I close this out here? No, I'm okay. Okay. I've said I, probably too much. Nope, you did not. You <laughs> said exactly what God knew I needed to call you for and ask you to say tonight. So, um, man, thank you, John. And, you know, I think again, if, if, if we, um, cultivate these three relationships in our life, um, man, God can take us to places that he needs us to go and sooner rather than later and again the way things are looking um who it couldn't it could be tomorrow john that you know gabriel might be wetting them lips right now I'm and ready. Uh, i am too and you know what the best part about it john when that trumpet sounds it truly will be what the, the best, best day, yet. day yet right man i love you love you too thanks for having me on thanks buddy Thanks for listening to the Charles Novell School of Music podcast, The Best Day Yet. You can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter under the name The Charles Novell School of Music. And for more information on CNS and our upcoming events, like our online school, our weekend regional sessions, our creative coaching, and our pastor's retreat, you can visit us at our website at www dot cnsmusic.com as you've listened to this episode we hope that you've gained some information that you can apply to your music and to your ministry to make today the best day yet 